Theo, SQL's from the 80s. Why are you still using it now? There's all these awesome new solutions that are so much faster and better and ready for your JavaScript code bases. Why do you still use SQL? Well, uh, let's talk about it. If you weren't familiar, SQL isn't from the 80s. It's actually from the 70s. The language originally was designed in 1974. Postgres started in the early to mid 80s, but it didn't become Postgres SQL until 96. 95 was when they first introduced SQL to it. MySQL started in the same year of 95. Fart. These solutions have now been around for almost 30 years. You'd think something would have come around that's better, right? Well, kind of. We've seen everything from Mongo to Dynamo, as well as new proprietary things like Fauna and Zata, all trying to rethink how data should be stored. And the harsh reality is SQL is still the best standard. It's not going anywhere. Why is that? What are the problems with all these other things? Well, to put it frankly, none of these other things have followed a standard. They've mostly been focused on gimmicky features and fancy additions like adding GraphQL on top of SQL. Some bad news for you. GraphQL wasn't meant to replace SQL. GraphQL was meant to be a query language for your front end to get data from your back end such that you can make one schema and everybody could fulfill it on every side. That's nothing like SQL. SQL is for querying structured data from a relational database. And it's still really good for that as long as you need a relational database. The harsh reality is, most of us need relational databases. SQL is a phenomenal syntax for querying databases, updating databases, and accessing and changing data within them. And relations make it much easier to change the shape of our database over time. If you know day one what your database is going to look like, you're confident it's almost never going to change, and you need it to scale to billions of rows. Maybe take a look at some of these new solutions like Dynamo, but for the average user in the vast vast majority of applications, the flexibility a relational data model gives you is more than worth it. It's almost essential for productive development. This has come at costs though. The SQL standard was built in an era where everybody kind of just ran the servers. Like if I needed to get data or serve a website back in the day, I'd have a server or an old laptop in my garage plugged into ethernet, running Linux on it that I would SSH into, make some quick changes to a config file and now access, expose, or do whatever I need to to that database. But there was a machine running 24 seven with a connection to the database, fetching data from it. So the, the speed of connection could be made and the number of connections you can make didn't matter a whole lot. Nowadays, not only does it kind of matter, it matters a lot because we're not running servers 24 seven. We spin up a server on every request when we use things like Edge and Lambda, which means we have to make a new connection every time someone asks for data. A lot of these new solutions like Mongo offered better connection methods, to be frank, offer way better performance in serverless environments. And that's a big part of what people are talking about when they say things like web scale. It seemed for a bit like SQL wasn't going to be able to keep up. And I, I had my concerns too. I was leaning into the Mongo direction for a little bit during college. The combination of new tools like bouncers, HTTP forwarders, and the crazy stuff PlanetScale is doing with database.js have more than resolved these performance issues. On top of that, the innovation around the storage layer through things like Vitesse or Cockroach have allowed for the actual data layer to scale to absurd sizes. MySQL is still the database that all of YouTube runs on. It's what all of Uber runs on, all of GitHub, all of these platforms. And they use things like Vitesse underneath MySQL to actually scale that storage to whatever levels they need to. If it was still difficult to get performance at scale from SQL, then it would be worth forgoing the standard and moving to something new. And honestly, I do really like the idea of an external provider managing my database for me. I don't want to think about these things anymore. I don't want to have to spin up a new instance and migrate my RDS cluster when I hit a new capacity limit. I just want to read and write to my database. And SQL crazy enough, is still the best way to do that. It has been a phenomenal experience. I am surprised how many people work hard to make SQL the best option at all times. On the rare occasions, somebody pushes something that really does make developers' lives better. The SQL world gets it not too long after. And in the end, I always find myself reaching for whatever SQL database is the easiest to set up and scale to my use case. And there will always be wonderful tools, everything from Prisma to Drizzle to Keasley to all sorts of great things in the other ecosystems. I know Active Record and Rails, for example. SQL as a standard gives us so much power, and I think we're a little too excited to leave it. And if that worked, we would have long ago. This is not the first time SQL has died, and it certainly won't be the last. But in the end, I'll still be using SQL for most of my databases. Hope this was a helpful one. I have a video here about how to pick a database from all the different options that exist. So if you want to learn more about how I think about this stuff, check that video out. That was a good one.